Today's video is brought to you by Gray Viking Games. Click the link in the description below to buy MTG Arena codes for cosmetics, packs, and more. Hey, what's up everyone? My name is Jeff, and today we're gonna dive into some new awesome spoilers for Strixhaven School of Mages. Super excited to jump into this. Uh, make sure you guys hit the like button and subscribe to me for more spoiler content that'll be coming out in the future. Uh, and uh, we got a lot to talk about today because there was the uh, orientation event that happened today. So the first initial like real kickoff of the spoiler season uh, for Strixhaven, and we have a lot to jump into. So let's go ahead and jump right into it with our... Uh, First Planeswalker is here for this one. So first off, I'm going to dive into just the different mechanics that are available while talking about some of the cards that we're doing into, as well as just a little bit of news that's coming out with this, uh, just to cover on this first kind of run through, and then we're going to just be focusing on spoilers in the future. But diving into mechanics here first, first off, we have modal uh, dual face cards coming back. So we have the double cards here. Uh, this is the first time we've had two Planeswalkers. So cool, cool. That's awesome. Uh, Rowan um is you know they both have the the same static effect which is instant sorcery spells cost one less to cast uh which is really cool i think that you kind of play this card maybe for that ability and everything else is just kind of like extra fun stuff so you want to have the ability that kind of synergy on this uh rowan's uh the plus one uh, it deals one damage to each opponent. Uh, if you if you've drawn three or more cards this turn, instead she deals three damage to each opponent instead. Uh, and then the negative four, uh, you get an emblem with whenever you cast an insert sorcery spell, you may pay two. If you do copy that spell, you may choose new targets new targets for the copy. So you just have a dual strike available all the time. Cool thing about that is that you can get multiple of those emblems uh, at some point, and you could eventually play like five mana for three ops or something like that. You know, like there's there's interesting stuff you can definitely do with that. I I think that that is where you want to build this this deck or this card around wheel scholar frost five mana uh for loyalty uh tick up plus the plus one up to one target creature has base power and toughness zero two until out of turn so a little bit of defense uh, stop a creature from actually being able to attack in at will most likely uh and then zero three uh, and the negative three is <laughs> draw two cards. I don't know what I'm talking about. And then negative seven. Uh, this one is the one, probably the most underwhelming part of this card. Uh, exile up to the up to five target permanent. So you can exile a bunch of lands and everything like that. For each permanent exile this way, its controller creates a four four blue and red elemental uh, creature token, which is cool. But they're also like really big. Maybe you can throw all those onto your own side. So maybe if you're like playing treasures, the things that you're fine exiling your permanents, you can have a bunch of, you know blue red elemental creature tokens i feel like if they got haste or if they got like something else it would be like okay it's an actual combo or you know on the other side okay i'm actually trying to get land destruction i just have to have a way to d deal with four fours but otherwise i feel like that's just that might set you up into a worse situation than if you had not done that and so i'm not totally sure i like the negative seven here uh but you know it's it's an extra ability on a planeswalker with a ton of options so that's cool anyway diving into more of the mechanics here so the first mechanic um Professor of Symbology, two mana, two one. Whenever it enters the battlefield, learn. Learn is the new mechanic. Uh, so you may reveal a lesson card you own from outside uh, the game and put it into your hand. I, I really wish they would just change the wording on from outside the game and say sideboard. That means sideboard. Uh, there are times maybe that it changes up what, exactly what that means, but just change the sideboard to fit whatever you want the outside the game to mean is what I would say. <laughs> so or the rules on it, whatever you want to do, just just is so funky there. Uh, anyway, but or you can discard a card and draw a card. So whenever you learn, you have the ability to go dig for a lesson card or or discard a card and draw a card. Oops, wrong side. Uh, and so here are some of the lesson cards. I'm just going to dive into a few of these ones. Uh, Pest Summoning, um, you know, it can create two one one black creature, uh, green pest creature tokens. Uh, and whenever the creature dies, you gain one life. So that's pretty cool. Uh, so pests are, are pretty cool. It's it's a lesson sorcery card. You can get that from the sideboard. Uh, put onto it just by having the effect. Anytime that you learn, you can grab that from the sideboard into your hand. Which means if you fill your sideboard with a lot of different stuff, it can be pretty cool. Uh, confront the past. Uh, X in black, lesson sorcery. Uh, choose one, tar return target planeswalker card with mana value X or less from the, your graveyard to the battlefield. Uh, so you can return planeswalkers back or re remove twice X loyalty counters uh, from target planeswalker and opponent controls. So it's either Planeswalker removal, which you can run this into any deck that runs lesson and, uh, and some black mana, and you might just be able to, okay, they're playing up against the Planeswalker. I need to have a way to kill that. Here we go. I found the way to do that. And so you can just bring this as an extra card back to hand, and so it's really nice to be able to play with your sideboard, kind of being able to come back into hand. So that side of it's pretty cool. Also just works with Planeswalkers if you need to get them back from the graveyard. That's a great, good way to do it too. So cool stuff. Uh, other mechanics are these are other lesson cards which i thought this was really interesting these are all colorless sorceries 
I'm not sure if that's like going to be a thing that's just going to be around for everywhere. Or is it just something consi- uh, just up to lessons? Um, I, that's pretty exciting, though. I'm, I'm pretty stoked about this. It looks like we're going to have quite a few lesson cards available to us. Um, just if they do different different things. Scry two, draw a card. Uh, exile target non land permanent. It's uh, it's controller draws a card. Basically, just effects that are available and not always in every color. Like just exiling target non land permanent, and it doesn't come back. Like if you're in white, that that could be a better removal spell than having it you know exiled underneath an enchantment that could end up getting destroyed. Uh, so maybe you run one or two of each of these just in case type of cards in your sideboard if you're running any kind of uh, you know, learn effects. But then you may not care about them later. Being able to give counters onto stuff and give it vigilance could be really nice for other colors. I don't know. So it's I, I'm intrigued about these cards. The the cost definitely seems expensive, but they're colorless, which means they can cost less enough. Like you, you can you can get them to cost zero with costing less effects or that kind of thing, which could be kind of interesting as well. All right, diving into uh, one more mechanic here. This is uh, Mark Rosewater uh, did a teaser set and said one of the one of the cards are one of the effects would become a, a keyword that would be eternal. I'm guessing that's ward. Uh, so ward over there, uh, ward two, whenever this creature becomes a target of a spell or a building opponent uh, controls, counter it unless that player pays two. I'm not sure if this means that you could also have that pay uh, like something else. Like it could also be, you know, blue or it could be, you know, whatever el- ever else the ward decides to be. So it could be like ward and one blue symbol, which means it's hexproof unless someone actually has blue mana. I-, I think that would be a really cool effect. So I'm hoping that this is the keyword that kind of sticks around. It's it's like hexproof, but not quite as dastardly as hexproof can sometimes be, uh, where this is just like, okay, it's a little bit more to target me. And I, I like that. I- I'm fine with that becoming an eternal uh a keyword i think it's actually pretty cool anyway and then uh the card itself whenever it enters the battlefield exile an instant or sorcery card from your graveyard put a number of plus and plus encounters onto torment sculptor uh equal to half that card's mana value rounded up so mana value is now converted mana cost uh flamethrower sonata actually works well with that with two mana sorcery discard a card this is a modal land uh, or, or card again discard a card then draw a card so you can discard the instant sorcery that you you, you want to get into the uh, into the graveyard for torrent sculptor and also says whenever you discard an instant sorcery this this way it deals damage equal to that card's mana value to target creature or plans like you don't control so this is a good search of speed really powerful removal spell or potentially like three or four points of damage uh they can do to a creature or planeswalker but that's pretty good for two mana and then you have the ability to you know make torrent sculptor maybe a little bit more powerful uh later on in the game you know i i don't see this ever getting up more than like a six six but a four mana six six isn't the worst and the fact that you have a removal spell kind of attached to it as well pretty good stuff like so it's definitely a playable card all right uh so those are some of the mechanics uh, we also got the uh, uh, lore hold apprentice we already kind of saw magecraft in the last video i did uh but this is just kind of showcasing all the different things that magecraft can be all of them say the same thing whenever you cast or copy an instant or sorcery spell then do a thing uh, so Lorehold Apprentice, the Boros, until end of turn, spirits you control gain tap this creature, it deals one damage to each opponent. That would work pretty well. Uh, sorry, yeah, spirits, being able to get that well, could work really well in like a Kaikar type of deck where you're trying to cast spells, you're getting spirits they can tap down to a little damage to each opponent. Like that could be a pretty fun ability in a Kaikar deck. Uh, Quadrix Apprentice, probably the one, I, there's a few of these that are powerful enough that, that they're worth talking about. Uh, and Quadrix Apprentice, whenever you cast or copy an instant or sorcery spell, like the top three cards of your library, move a land card to put it from among them into your hand uh really really good <laughs> it's really powerful we kind of saw this with um what, what's his bucket the the card that had constellation that would bring put lands into your hand as well and that was already played every once in a while because it was good i think that putting this with a magecraft effect actually might be even better uh although it does you know having it be blue and green to cast might be make make it a little bit more fair i don't know Simic always gets the most busted thing. That's just how it works. Uh, this one, whenever you ca- whenever you do Magecraft stuff, uh, each opponent loses one life and you gain one life. Uh, so it can be pretty pretty fun stuff. The other two, Prisoner Apprentice, uh, these are more limited cards. Uh, Silver Quill Apprentice could be kind of cool whenever you know cast Instant Sorcery, target creature gets, you just target any creature, get plus one plus O. Oh, that could be fun with like some, you know, combat tricks. I, I've never really seen like a, an Orzhov combat trick type of deck. So that could actually work out pretty well in that with that. So I don't know, maybe, Maybe, maybe that's the way to go uh prismatic apprentice uh it's it's decent ish yeah whatever it gets unblockable and if it if you cast something with five or greater mana value then you get a plus encounter onto it and so nah. all right 
diving into some of the other stuff we got some new lands which are awesome uh the snarl lands or uh show lands i guess you call these i don't actually know the names the names of these lands are but uh whenever it launches enters whenever it enters the battlefield i can reveal a mountain or a plains card from my hand if you don't then it then tap it and so it's untapped as long as you have a mountain or plains in hand so if you have triumphs those can count as you know all the different you know basic of the land types uh the snow lands uh, can also count for that uh the pathway lands do not the basic lands do and so i'm not sure if this actually fixes completely the issues that we've been having with mana bases maybe it does to an extent you know like it, it, they're dual lands that at least can be played but i can see these if you're playing lots of pathway lands as well you're also going to have issues with these having them actually be dual lands mean that they're at least good uh and so i, I I'm, I'm in between on these ones uh if you're running fable passages you're going to technically have less mountains and plains all this kind of stuff you're going to because you're going to have fable passages instead of those uh and so all of the lands that we have kind of are fighting against each other for like good lands in this format. And so I'm not so sure what I think about that. I think that they're good. I think that it's, you know, it's, they are good. It's just going to be really painful for, for standard and historic. I think it's a really good spot right now. Like this, it's really good because you just have all the shock lands. These work perfect. So now you have probably the best lands to be running with shock lands. The, the check lands were really good with it, but I think these are even better because you don't have to have, you know, you can have a basic land still pretty well in different colors or whatever and, and make it still work out pretty well. I think these are maybe better than check lands. Check lands are a little bit better in the late game where you might be down to zero, you know, zero cards in hand or whatever, you know, top deck a land and you don't can't show another land in hand if you don't have that. So I, I'm not sure which one's better. Anyway, uh, so then we also got, uh, this is more news stuff. I'm not going to focus too much on commander cards. These are the new commanders for, uh, the, the Strixhaven commander decks. So, uh, we got one in each of the different schools. Uh, I'm, again, I'm not going to spend too much time on any of these. Uh, if you guys want to be checking out more of the commander stuff, I do like commander. I'll, I'll talk about how some of the cards that we, we get for standard for arena fit with commander. But for the most part, I'm focused on arena, which is standard and historic formats. Maybe we'll dive into brawl as well at some point. Uh, but for the most part, these ones are not going to be focusing on as much. Any of the commander cards in general, not going to focus on as much. Uh, maybe they do end up coming in some fashion into arena. Then we'll focus on them then but not right now. So uh, we also, along the same vein, uh, some newer cards, newer stuff coming in. If you're buying the actual booster packs, uh, we have some really cool card art uh, for older cards that come in with the, in the Biblioplex, I think is what it's called, in the in the mystical archive section of the uh, thing up in the top. Uh, you kind of see that, the, that there's a couple of these different kinds of cards that are coming in with that. So if you're into the buying this, the boosters and everything like that, cool there's a way to get some really cool card art which i, I do think these look really awesome so i definitely I, I want some but it's not as big of a focus uh as for for this channel as arena and stuff that works like that so let's dive into the actual spoiler section of this so we're diving into other actual cards and some cool stuff that came out finally uh shadrick's silver quill five mana elder dragon so uh every one of the the schools, uh, Silverquill, uh, Lorehold, Quadri Quandrix, all those ones uh, were founded. It said that, that in the in the orientation, they said they were each founded by a dragon. And so each one of them have a cool elder dragon. Uh, and this is the Silverquill one. And this card is awesome. If the rest of them are as awesome as this, I'm really excited. Uh, this one, I'm not sure if this is necessarily the most powerful card for standard or you know anything like that, but uh, it's a really cool card. So um at the beginning of combat on your turn you may choose two each mode must target a different player that's a really big deal uh so you have to target them or you or uh, and if you're playing in a constructed format there's only two people so one of these is going to your opponent and they're kind of good things uh target player creates a two one white and black inkling creature uh inkling creature token with flying uh so that can be really nice uh to have on your side but if you're giving it to them you know then, then you have a blocker for your shadricks uh target player draws a card and loses one life you don't want your opponent to be drawing cards it's like one of the worst things so you don't ever want to be giving them that one and then target player puts a plus and plus encounter on each creature they control so it's it's kind of interesting i'm not sure what's which is the right way to be going with this because the effects you definitely want to have for you but you don't want any of these effects to be going for your opponent unless you knew for sure you can get rid of the 2-1 white flyer token at the same time if they don't have any flyers and maybe don't have as many creatures you can keep putting counters onto their stuff if it's not going to be that big of a threat 
um, give yourself, you know, a bunch of flyers, then eventually put counters onto them and attack in. Like that can be really busted as well. You play this in like a Mardu deck and give yourself some extra combat steps, and you can have a pretty, pretty awesome, you know, attack with this card. Uh, anyway, so there's some pretty cool stuff with this. I, I'm not sure exactly what I think of the card because it's it feels awesome and also like, oh man, I'm not sure if I want to ever give my opponent anything good, and this makes me give opponents good things sometimes. So. Anyway, uh, interesting cards. I'm excited for the other other Elder Dragons. All right, and then we got a bunch of Deans. We got a, a cycle of Dean cards. They are each modal cards. Uh, each of them are creatures on both sides, uh, representing the different colors in their colors, in their school, sorry. Colleges, whatever. So Plarg, Dean of Chaos, two mana, two, two, Orc Shaman, can tap the discarded card and then draw a card, the looting effect. I believe that's the looting effect, right? Uh, there's a pillage effect, looting effect, all the different ones. I don't know which ones are which. I think that's the looting effect. Anyway, uh, five mana tap, reveal cards from the top of your library until you reveal a non-legendary, non-land card with mana value three or less. So you can't go find the other side of Plarg or anything like that. Uh, and then you may cast the car that card without paying its mana cost. Uh, put all revealed cards... Uh, not cast this way on the bottom of your library in random order. So, uh, so, so with this, I'm not totally sure how this works. If it's the same type of way as Cascade was working beforehand, I'm not sure if you can go search. I guess Valky wouldn't work because it's, it says non-legendary, but something like that, like something with it's a modal card that on the front side is only you know, less than than three on the Romanica side. But could you cast the other side of it, the more expensive side? I'm not sure if we have anything like that that would work well with it, but it's a little bit interesting at least. Uh, but it, it is just five mana to go digging for value. Uh, Augusta, this is a, a completely different card. This this is one of the few that doesn't feel like it meshes that well uh, with the other side of it, but still cool. Augusta, Dina of Order, uh, three mana, one, three. Other tapped creatures you control get plus one, plus oh. So any attacking creatures get plus one, plus oh. Uh, other untapped creatures you control get plus or zero, plus one. So better on defense. I like it already. And that is, it says other, so it doesn't count itself. And then whenever you attack, untap each creature you control, then tap any number of creatures you control. So you attack in, all of them untap, and then you can choose which ones to tap down. You can even tap creatures that you control that haven't attacked in uh, to get a little bit bigger. That could work with like in, in Historic, there's the Throne of the God Pharaoh. Uh, there's you know, a bunch of different cards that can work with things tapping down that could work really well with, with uh, Magda and Dwarves wanting to be tapped down a bunch of times. So they tap it, untap, and then they can tap again again like that could be really really busted in a magda deck so i i think in general you can do some pretty fun awesome stuff with this card i'm excited for it um augusta is definitely the side of this one that i'm most excited for all right jumping into the other ones i have to try to get through these fairly quickly because there's so many cards right now um uh, uh the quandrix dean Kiana Dean of sus uh, Substance, three mana, two, two, elf druid. Tap to exile the top card of your library. If it's a land card, put it into your hand. Otherwise, put a study counter onto it. So study counter, it's still exiled. Uh, then you can pay five and create a zero, zero green and blue fractal creature token and put a plus and plus and counter on it for each different mana value uh, among non-land cards you own in exile with study counter. So mana value is co converted mana cost now. So each different converted mana cost you have, you end up having this cost or be a pretty big fractal creature token which is pretty awesome uh imraham dean of theory four mana three three bit bird wizard the other side of this has flying um and x blue blue tap it uh exile the top x cards of your library and put a study counter on each of them and then you may put a card you own in exile with a study counter into your hand so you could already have used Ke uh, Keen, Keane, whatever, <laughs> and uh, just bring this out, pay two and tap it and get a study card out of it. Th that effect seems less cool. It is a good way to like dig through a bunch of cards and find them. At the same time, all those cards are exiled then and you have to find another Ibrahim to get study counters. If there was a way to make study counters work uh, with other cards, we haven't found any of those yet. Uh, there's nothing in here yet that shows any of those, uh, but then it might become a little bit better. I'm not sure if I like this, just putting a bunch of things in exile um without a guarantee that you know this guy will survive you know <laughs> multiple times after you can make sure you can bring one good thing back to your hand but if you're looking for two things and you exile both of them and then this dies after that you're just kind of out of luck for, until you play it again wait a turn for it to survive so that they can have the ability to tap down after summoning sickness and so i i'm not totally sure i i like this but uh both sides can be pretty good all right so shaley 
Shal Shale, Dean of Radiance, two mana, one, one, bird clerics. More birds. I'm liking the birds. Bird, bird tribal has a shot. Uh, you can tap it and put a plus and plus encounter on each creature that entered the battlefield under your control this turn. Uh, pretty awesome. I mean, anything that entered the battlefield under your control, that can end up being really busted. I feel like this, this set is wanting lots and lots of like ways to make tokens to go wide and do cool stuff. And so it's pretty cool. Uh, which, Orzov typically does, so we'll see if Silver Quill does that kind of stuff. Uh, Ambrose, Dean of Shadow, 4 mana, 4-4. Four, four. Tap to add a plus and plus counter on another target creature. Uh, then it deals 2 damage to that creature. Uh, and so you can potentially kill a 1-1 one, one on their side of the board. But whenever you a creature you control with a plus and plus counter dies, you get to draw a card. So it's also good to put onto your own stuff. You could technically play Shale. Like it does work with Shale to be able to play it out there, put a counter on to kill it, and get a card draw if you want it. That could be cool, I guess. <laughs> so anyway, interesting stuff. Uh, Valentine, Dean of the Vein. This is the Witherbloom Deans. Um, <coughs> excuse me. One mana, one one with light menace and light flink. Those are really good stats for a one one. That's awesome. And then the other sides of it are just upside. If a non token creature and opponent controls would die, exile it instead. Really powerful one drop. This is actually like really really good. This the shut sounds a lot of combos in like in in modern or whatever it's just anytime that creatures would die they get exiled instead it does say non-token creature that means that tokens could still cause the dies effect to create like some sort of combo if ever you're needing you know tokens to actually die and go to the graveyard they do go to the graveyard before they cease to exist which is kind of like exile anyway but they do cause the dies uh, triggers to happen and then whenever you do uh cause something to exile you may pay two if you do you create a one one black and green pest creature token with when this creature dies against one life i like that side of it because it makes this card relevant in the late game even still so if you kill something you can pay two, get another a token out of it so pretty awesome stuff other side of this, uh, Lissetti, uh, Dean of the Root, 4 mana, 4-4. Four, four. Whenever you gain life, you may pay one if you do put a plus and plus encounter on each creature you control, and those creatures gain trample on the end of turn. That's a little bit busted. <laughs> I really like that. But it does force green to want to be, be able to gain lifelink. The other side of it does work with it. Uh, but you can play just this just for the Lissetti side in, you know, in, in a gold, uh, a green stompy deck and have some ways there are some small ways to be gaining life like through food through whatever else and if you have the ability just to put counters onto everything and give trample to all of your creatures just all of a sudden and, and not, not only that if you have lots of ways to be gaining life like a radiant fountain gains you life you get to use that radiant fountain to tap and give everything plus and plus encounter you could end up giving like five plus and plus encounters to everything on the turn after this if there's enough ways to to get you know life gain uh so pretty busted i'm actually this is awesome i, I think this this works really good scavenging ooze is a way to gain life consistently and get stuff uh cling to dust is a one mana way to gain life and exile a, a creature from something else and then you can so you can end up doing this quite a few times pretty easily on turn five uh to get counters onto everything so lissetti i'm really excited for i think it's a really good card the valentine also really good side of it this might be one of the best deans i think for constructed especially um all right, and then we got the Prismari one, Deans, uh, Uvilda, Dean of Perfection, three mana, two, two, uh, Jin Wizard. Tap, and you may exile an instant sorcery card from your hand and put three honed counters on it. It gains uh, at the beginning of your upkeep. So this is basically uh, suspend. Beginning of your upkeep, if this card was exiled, remove a honed counter from it. Uh, and when the last honed counter is removed from this card, if it's not exiled, you may cast it. So on your upkeep, you have a chance to cast it. It costs four less to cast this way. So you don't actually make it completely completely free to cast but for less is a pretty big deal that means that you could get out really expensive things for a lot less by using the home counter so anything basically gets the ability to suspend to make it cheaper so kind of ramp in blue a little bit except you have to play this out on turn three let it survive for a turn play it out on turn four so if you're not casting something really big on turn eight when this finally has a chance to come down or yeah it's like eight seven or eight then I mean, I don't know. There might be just better ways to ramp up with treasures or anything like that. So I'm not sure if I like that card in general. That, but maybe, maybe it's awesome. I, I think the way that it's worded, because you do have the ability to cast it. Uh, I think you might be able to use this for X spells as well. Uh, correct me if I'm wrong. Put it on the comments below. Uh, but I believe you can have that four four less to cast on X spells. So that could end up being a pretty cool way to go with this. But I don't know uh nazari dean of expression five mana four four at the beginning of your upkeep exile the top card of each opponent's library until uh 
until end of turn you may cast spells from among those the exiled cards you may spend mana as those any mana color to cast those spells uh so that's pretty awesome in in commander to be able to just like grab all of the different cards and then whenever you cast a spell from exile and that's just any card from exile put a, a plus and plus counter onto you an azari demon expression so that works with with uh you know any card from exile also means or and yeah it's any spell which counts for bone crusher giant so if you stomp something it goes to exile cast a bone crusher you get a counter onto this so honestly the, the azari set of i think is almost better it's card draw because you get to just look at the top card of their 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 deck every single turn uh and see what's there do i want to cast that no uh, if you're just up and, and constructed if you're playing in, in commander have a, quite a few different uh opponents you can end up having lots of more options every single turn to, of what stuff you want to cast so i i think it's actually the nazari side of it is a really good card U uvilda eh, i'm not as big of a fan of it but the nazari side is cool it's just expensive for what it's doing as well so i don't know maybe maybe it's good all right, and we're done with the Dean cycle. Uh, diving into some of the other stuff. Archmage, Archmage Emeritus. Uh, four mana, two, two. Magecraft, whenever you cast or copy an instant or sorcery spell, draw a card. Very simple, very cool, and completely busted. <laughs> and a little bit scary. I do wonder if there's any kind of Magecraft on anything that's not creatures. Uh, that would that would be a pretty busted effect. Like the one, the biggest downside of this card is that it can die to removal, you know, uh, before you potentially have a chance to cast everything. But this is just basically uh, a, um, what's what's the um, whispering? Oh my goodness, uh, Beast Whisper. There it is, Beast Whisper, but for spell instants and sorceries instead. And Beast Whisper worked really well in certain decks. This will work really well in certain decks. It's not going to go into every single deck quite as effectively, but it's really really good. So <laughs> if you want to draw cards, guess what? This is a good way to go with it. Uh, all right, and so diving in. Oh yeah, a Dragon Dragon's Guard Elite as well. Uh, if you guys saw uh, the two mana two two deepwood champion is very similar to this i think there was another card in the past that, that linked back to the same type of thing uh, basically whenever you cast or copy an instant or sorcery spell put a plus and plus encounter onto it which is really cool already we, we've seen other cards like this the cool thing about this one is that it's two mana two two with uh, uh, with the same type of effect but it is a two two instead of a one one like the other ones have been uh, and then a, then you can pay six and double the number of counters on it that can be a really busted effect. <laughs> that is actually really good. Uh, the only thing I'm, I'm glad about is that this isn't an elf. This would just be busted in elves. Uh, not that elves necessarily cast lots of instant sorceries. Uh, but anyway, that's, that's just good. I think that there, there's a lot of different druids that are coming in this too. So maybe druids could be a, a tribal deck. Uh, but yeah, anyway, that's good stuff. I think that green has lots of instant sorceries just cast with this. Uh, going to... You know, I, I'm interested to see what new spells like instants and sorceries we actually do get to use to cast uh, with this uh, to see how good it is. I'm not sure exactly what what format this runs into, but already with like questing beasts, with all the different adventure cards that use uh, that, that cast stuff. Dude, if if Lucky Clover was in the format during all this stuff, this would be so busted. Everything would be so busted with Lucky Clover. So we're glad that's gone. Uh, all right. Diving into some of the uncommons and comments here at this one uh storm kiln uh, artist four mana two two it's a dwarf it's a shaman uh and it does create treasures for us uh so yeah the, the first side of it uh it gets plus one plus oh for each artifact that you control awesome that can be really good with treasures it can end up being a really powerful uh attacker if we can give it trample some way it'd be even better because the two toughness still is a little bit weak but magecraft whenever you cast uh or copy an instant or sorcery spell create a treasure token that's awesome uh this gives you more reason to be cast uh spoils of war whatever the card is that gives you treasures as well and you discard a card draw a card and and uh and create a treasure token now you can create two treasure tokens so there's a lot of stuff working with magda i think that can make this a little bit busted like there's a really good boros uh boros deck and i'm really excited to see what what the boros dragon is that we get with it as well to see if the magda dwarf create treasures deck is going to be even more busted um all right and then just a couple common cards here pop quiz uh some some fun uh flavor with this uh three vada draw a card and then you can learn um so awesome cool stuff uh the learn effect is is going to be really cool i think i don't know but you get to learn you grab a lesson card from the from the sideboard i mean so this is three mana draw two but you get to choose the one card that you get you get 
Lesson cards are only so good though. So I, I, I'm not sure exactly how good this is. It is instant speed though. Um, and then waterfall aerialist four mana, three, one flyer with ward two. This is just another, another card that we got with ward. And I think that basically brings us to the end. Oh yeah. Eager first year, two mana, two, two mage craft. Whenever you cast or copy an instant or sorcery spell, it gets plus one, plus one, plus one, plus own until end of turn. So just some limited uh, fodder. I could see eager first year being a decent um, aggro card uh, in a deck that is trying to play a bunch of combat tricks and everything. But that's it, guys. That is the end of of the uh, spoilers here for us. And so, uh, sorry, I was trying to get back to my, my first page here. So I have the cool art to end it off with. <laughs> Nailed it. <laughs> Not awkward at all. All right. Anyway, guys, thank you so much for hopping in. Uh, we're going to be diving into spoilers uh, every day as often as they are coming out. Uh, still putting out some uh, content as well. Sorry if I've been a little bit slow on it. I've just been feeling a little bit burnt out on Magic uh, for the last little bit. But that's to be expected uh, because it's been three months of the same stuff. And new stuff always gets me super excited to jump back into it and, and do everything. And so really excited to jump into it. And I hope you guys like the video. If you did, please leave a like, subscribe, all that stuff. I'll see you guys in the next one. Thank you so much and bye-bye.